Welcome to Turning the Page, Lexington Public Library's podcast where we discuss library happenings, take a behind the scenes look at different parts of the library, and of course, book recommendations and author interviews. I'm your host, Jennifer. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy. Hi everyone, today on Turning the Page, we have Lynn Hightower, the author of numerous thrillers, including the Sonora Blair and Lena Padgett Detective series. Lynn Hightower's internationally best-selling novels have been included in the New York Times list of notable books, the London Times bestseller list, the W.H. Smith Fresh Talent Awards, and the Seamus Award. Lynn teaches master novel classes in the UCLA Extension Writing Program and works as a manuscript consultant slash writing coach for novelists. Today we are discussing her new book, The Enlightenment Project. Hi Lynn, welcome to Turning the Page. Hello. I'm glad to have you here. We're really excited. If you want to take a few minutes to introduce yourself to our audience of listeners of Turning the Page. I'd be happy to, and I'm very happy to be here. And hello to everyone. I, as I am a novelist so that I can tell lies for a living and wear jeans to work. I love uh, that idea. Yeah, that's my <laughs> skill set. And, you know, I'm a thriller writer, and a lot of times my research takes me to dark places, and I write about the things that scare me. So that my fears become your fears. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) That's fantastic. I think our listeners are going to love that because we have a lot of mystery and thriller listeners. Yes. um, And a lot of readers, I should say. Yes. (laughs) So I'm going to ask you a couple questions and answer as long as you want. Feel free to just get whatever answer out you want. That's how I feel. So your first question is, tell us about the inspiration of your newest book, The Enlightenment Project. You know, we are living in such an extraordinary time because right now the magical and the spiritual and the science are all integrating together Mm -hmm. in science, in medicine. You'll find that neurologists usually recommend that their patients um, meditate. Of course, how you meditate is another question. (laughs) Different forms of meditation out there, right? right? <laughs> and I was also terrified by The Exorcist when it came out. I saw it at the old Turfland Mall Theater many, many years ago. Oh, my gosh. I was really young, you know, and there was a tornado that night, and the city was shut down. But they had a generator, so they didn't tell us. We were just all watching that while the whole city was shut down. And it was so creepy because you go outside. Oh, my gosh. What a great story. (laughs) There's no lights. There's no cars. I just saw The Exorcist. The world has ended tonight. Okay. So it did make an impression. It certainly left a mark. <laughs> I would um, say so. <laughs> yeah. And I I uh, started researching the boy that the case was really based on, the pseudonym Roland Doe. And I always wondered, you know, how did he deal with that trauma growing up? Because that had to be a terrible mm-hmm. trauma, the things he went through. And surely he felt singled out and worried that it would come back. Now, he grew up, got married, got a job at NASA, which I think is so interesting. That is. And he died, I think, in 2020, but he never spoke publicly about it. And that's when my hero, Noah Archer, was born, because he was possessed at the age of 11. And he became a neurologist to study the brain. Actually, he became a neurosurgeon to study the brain and try and figure out Why did it happen to him? And could he come up with a science protocol, okay, Mm -hmm. a science protocol to help if it came back to him or to help his patients? And he's created, uh, he's using um, just gentle neurological stimulation, which they're doing right now to create enlightenment on demand like cable. You just hook it up, okay? Wow. (laughs) Oh, I know. It had such a strong effect on his research subject patients. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. It helped them with depression and addictions, and uh, but some of them, it, they went to the dark side, and he realized, oh, right, people have a choice. So it, uh, a lot of his patients got into a lot of dark trouble, and, and then it's brought back the threat from his childhood, and now it's putting his patients at risk, his two little boys at risk, and his wife doesn't believe in any of it. Right. right. One of the scenes I really enjoyed I actually started reading it, then I I started listening to it. Uh And the scene where he drives home 
I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. But he drives home and he sees his son just staring. And I was, it gave me a creepy, <laughs> I literally got like that little weird chill that went Oh, my, that makes me so happy. Yeah, um, it really did. I was like, yeah. No, the is, book scared me when I wrote it. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, what what is he looking at? <laughs> it was something very dark and very malevolent. Yeah, you could tell just... You, it was great. So really, it gave thank me a chill. You. So yeah, so thank you. Kudos yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah. When I write it, it's very real to me. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, all of this happened. I was just watching. Right. You. Yeah. yeah. You're just. You're there to just sort of observe. Observe and write it down as fast as I can. Right. Yeah. This story blends many different disciplines: neurology, mm-hmm. psychology, mm-hmm. and religious practice. What kind of research went into this book? You know, the research astounded me. I started researching and I thought, oh, I'll have to dig and it'll be a little bit of this. It'll be the same old thing. Oh, no, honey. Oh, no, 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 (laughs) no, no. You know, exorcisms used to be quiet and secretive and shameful, you know, and it's just weird, crazy people. Well, now exorcists are on YouTube. Okay? Yeah. The demons are texting. I... Do not want a text from a demon, but (laughs) one of the exorcists I was reading about said, yeah, I'll be on the way to an exorcism. And, you know, my phone will go off and it'll be, she's ours. (laughs) You will (laughs) never get her back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what you do for a living. Okay, I'll write about it. You live it. Yeah, Um, I don't want any part of that. Yeah, they, they've done exorcisms by uh, cell phone just because the demand is so huge. The number of exorcist priests has quadrupled over the last few years. I was so fascinated wow. that in Milan they had an exorcism hotline. Yeah, it, do you feel under spiritual attack? You know, a lot of people are calling in about their teenagers, of course. Right, right. But but people, you know, people were in trouble and they needed help because exorcism – for all the theatrics we see, is really a prayer of deliverance. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a protocol of healing. Right. Okay, so so when people need help, you know, they need it right away. And and it's it's a very scientific process, discernment, which is basically what's going on. Do you have a mental illness? Right. Um, Let's decipher something that's happening. Is this is it internal with you or is it external coming out? after you. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's when they know they need the exorcist. So they work as a team. They work with psychiatrists, psychologists, doctors. They're going to rule out anything physical. They're going to rule out mental illness. You know, I spoke to a couple of therapists and psychiatrists about this. Oh, wow. And they said, yeah, they when it's coming from the outside in, that's when they know it's a demonic spiritual attack. Oh. And some of them say, well, I mean, I can't be sure, but I go forward believing them. And helping them. The point is, how can they navigate this? Right. And a good therapist is not going to say, ah, let's luck you away, baby. Um, A good therapist is going to say, okay, this is what your experience is. Let me help you navigate. Right. So basically, you know, a good doctor is going to try to figure out all possible ways to help their patient. Exactly. Whichever way they can. Exactly. Yeah. So open mind. Open mind. Open heart. Let's figure out what's wrong with you. Yes. 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 Do you have a favorite thing you discovered in your research that didn't make it into the book? I was utterly shocked when I came across some work by M. Scott Peck, the renowned psychiatrist that wrote The Road Less Traveled and People of the Lie. He did two exorcisms during his career. That Mm. I just about fell out of my chair. And I mean, and he said, I went into it thinking this was mental illness and I will help these people. And he said it was not mental illness. It was demonic possession. And he started out as a complete non-believer and became a complete believer. And it was his hope that it would become a recognized psychiatric condition so they could help people. And you know, it is now recognized in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Psychiatric Disorders. Um, <laughs> uh, it is. Possession is now a condition. I did. You did reference that in your book, and it did mm-hmm. make me wonder. It did make me want to look it up. Me too. Because I'm a librarian, <laughs> and I want to look up things. Yes, absolutely. So, wow. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Without spoilers for the Enlightenment Project, do you think you'll ever revisit Noah Archer for another story? I will because somewhat. Oh, I'm glad that you. Yes, he's about a that. really in- great character. You know, 
I love him. I mean, I'm just kind of half in love with him anyway. <laughs> um, because he's so real and he's so, he's just, a, you know, he's just a regular dude and he has problems and, and, and but he's got a, a high intelligence and a very interesting soul. Mm -hmm. So I love writing about Noah and I want to go somewhere new with it. I don't want to go past the tried and true, but someone I trust implicitly told me about a place which is in Kentucky that is so clearly thick with demonic infestation. Oh. It is the things I heard about it, I was told about it, are utterly terrifying. I mean, it, it scared me. And I know where it is, so I'm trying to decide. <laughs> are you going to venture that How way? close am I going to get? I don't want to bring anything home. I don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. set anything off. But on the other hand, when I'm researching a book, I pretty much will do anything. So remains to be seen how brave I'm going to be or how <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Up to how you look line. at it. Brave but not stupid, and that's going to be a hard one. <laughs> well, I know our listeners would like me to ask you where this place is, but I think I won't let you keep that a secret. I'm going like. to keep it a secret. Okay. Okay. And it's um, it's a place where people move in and move out very quickly. Oh, okay. So that's it's your clue. It's the kind of place <laughs> where the neighbors say, like, you know, in The Haunting of the Hill House, where they said, don't go there, it's not safe, don't do it. It's that kind of place where everyone around says, oh, no, don't stay there. This is not good. Oh, wow. And they won't tell you why, but they will terrify you. And they're right. Mm, I'm excited. I'm intrigued now. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I mean, how could I not write about that? Oh, yeah, for sure. We had a great time finding all the places in Lexington that you mentioned in your book. And you previously set your books in Cincinnati and other places around Kentucky. Mm -hmm. How do you decide where you're going to set your stories? Part of it is places I love, mm -hmm. which usually means the South. Although I'm writing a book right now that's set in France, which is another oh. place I love. A person from Kentucky in France, of course. Right. <laughs> and I think the Southern culture is my culture. And there's so much I love about it. And my agent loves it. He says he's from New York. He grew up in New Jersey. He says, no, 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 no. I love this stuff. Yes. I, I, you write it well because it's your heart. So, you know, run with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Besides which, I have to, people don't know about barbecue. They don't know about bourbon and the distillery district and horse racing. And, you know, yes. they need to be told. I was going to say, Archer has a good taste for liquids. He I'm does. going to throw he? that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading the, reading it going, hmm, okay, like some... maybe maybe I should be reading this with some on the set. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of other titles, and this may be a little bit like asking you who your favorite child is, mm -hmm. but do you have a favorite book that you've written? Well, of course, the one you're writing at the moment, it's kind of like a love affair. And right now I'm in the honeymoon stage. Eventually it will become a marriage and we'll need therapy. <laughs> um, but one I would mention, because I think, if someone liked The Enlightenment Project, they will like, this one is near and dear to my heart, and it's a very scary book, and it's called The Piper. And what it deals with is phone calls from the dead. Oh. And that's a thing, and it happens, and sometimes it's wonderful, and sometimes it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. mm. Gosh, now I'm very intrigued. Oh, yeah. No? So, yeah. <laughs> So our very last question for you is, what are you reading? I'm reading two books. I am just started reading Below, which I, I need to tell you the truth here. It was written by my daughter. Oh, you know, okay. The, the apple never falls far, and she writes horror. And it's kind of a, a Mothman kind of uh, story, and it's terrifying. So I'll... And that's Laurel Hightower. I was going to say, please give her a plug. <laughs> yes, it's, it's Laurel Hightower. And, you know, I put on Twitter, you know, read this great book. And, yes, we're related. This is my daughter. And then she tweets back, thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the plug. And I'm also reading a novel by Sheila Williams, who's in uh, northern Kentucky, uh, across the river from Cincinnati. It's called The Secret Women. I've known Sheila for years. We met at one of the book fairs, and she shared M&Ms with me. So, of course, we were friends for life. <laughs> Exactly. It's a very good book. It's a very good book. Well, Lynn, I, we have enjoyed having you. I really enjoyed your book. Thank you. Very much. And Thank I was going to say also, um, listening to it, 
the the audible is awesome, isn't it? Yes, the, the guy I, that does the narration. He did a really good job. I was going to uh, just real quickly ask you: Did you had something to do with that? Were you the or did the? I can take no credit for okay. that. My publisher sold the rights, and and then the guy that did the book is just so good. And honestly, the audible book is outselling everything. It is very good. Like I said, you know, I was reading it, then I. I was on vacation, so I was driving, you know, started listening to it. And I thought, wow, you know, his voice really goes well with the story. And he does have a good listening voice, you know, because sometimes you can listen to audiobooks. And within a few minutes, you're kind of like, mm, yeah, no, I don't want to listen to that guy for right. this long or this. But, yeah, he was great. So props have, to him. I have a client. I I work with writers on manuscript consults, and he was texting me while I was listening to the Audible, and he says, I find myself taking my two-year-old for long, long walks so I can hear the book. And my two-year-old's going, look, Daddy Squirrel, while, you know, while Noah's being crushed by a demon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the lovely scenery and then the characters being crushed. <laughs> well, thank you, Lynn, thank so you. very thank much. You. And we really... have honored to have you here and so uh, we hope to see you again i hope to be back thank you thank you bye bye hi everyone i'm erin the producer for turning the page welcome to our segment called behind the scenes each month i'll take a step out from behind the scenes to introduce you to someone else at the library whose work is also typically out of the public eye Today I'm talking to Kelly Parmley, Lexington Public Library's Community Relations Manager, about returning to our traditional summer programming for 2022. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited to have you on our behind the scenes segment here. So hopping right in, summer reading is finally back. Yay. Tell us about this year's program. Well, first of all, I have to say how excited we are that summer reading is finally back after a brief yet really long two-year hiatus. We're super excited to have normal, traditional, in-person library programs. So that's going to kick off on May 31st. That week at all of our locations, we're going to kick off with a petting zoo and free book giveaways from Scholastic. You know, those book fairs that they used to have when you were a kid at school. It's going to be like that, except it's free. So. So that's, awesome. that's going to be really exciting at all of our branches. So we're really looking forward to it. Great. So what do folks need to know before they come to the book fairs? They really don't need to know anything. Just come. The book fair in particular, there'll be a book for every child. There is one rule. The child has to be there. So unfortunately, we can't get books for brother, sister, son, child, whatever. And the actual child has to be there. And that is the rule of Scholastic. So we need to follow that with our agreement with them. But there'll be books. There'll be all kinds of activities, I think, at the branches, different games and crafts and activities and live animal petting zoo. So just come to have fun. That's what you need to know is be prepared to have a lot of fun. Great. We have a reading tracker this year, but not a full log. Tell us about some other ways people can interact with us. Yeah, we do have a reading tracker. In previous years, there's been like this really formal reading log, and you make a mark every time you read 15 minutes or whatever, and that just got to be a little cumbersome for people. And let's be honest, there are some people who don't love to read. So we want you to be able to participate in our program by coming to events and coming to the library and doing fun things like that. Or you can do it by reading if you're if you're someone who loves to do that. So we have a really simple reading tracker that you can pick up at each location or download off our website. And every time you read a book, there's a picture of a bookshelf and you just color in a book on the bookshelf. It's really fun. And if your kids maybe have a situation where they need to keep track of their reading for school the next year, that's a an easy way to do that and kind of kill two birds with one stone. Perfect. So what are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? Yeah. Well, strangely enough, I recently just did a big continuing education event for child care workers. And so I had to kind of refresh myself with a bunch of those. So I've been reading a lot of children's books. And my particular favorite is right here on my desk. It's called We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan Higgins. It's about a little Tyrannosaurus Rex named Penelope headed to her first day of school. And she doesn't know what to expect. And as the title might add... She probably um, eats her classmates, and they probably weren't expecting that. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and the kids and teachers have loved it. So if you have little ones in your life like you do, I I know, we don't eat our classmates is my suggestion. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for talking with us about summer reading. We're really, really excited to be able to do it again this year. So are we. <laughs> Penguin in the library. Watch out for that too. Live animals. Lots yes. of fun. Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie West, Learning and Development Manager for Lexington Public Library, and I'm here to share the programs we have going on in June. For full descriptions, please visit lexpublib.org summer. For adults, June 2nd at 1 o'clock, Community Crafters, We Love Crochet at Eastside. June 8th at 5 o'clock, Open Mic Night at Central, High School Teens and Adults. June 18th, 10 o'clock, Gardening for Pollinators at Tate's Creek. June 18th, 2 o'clock, Crafter Noon at Beaumont. June 20th, 6 o'clock, Independent Publishing Workshop at Northside. June 22nd, 5.30, Book Buzz at Eastside. June 23rd, 6 o'clock, Book Buzz at Beaumont. June 28th, 2 o'clock, Classic Films, His Girl Friday at Beaumont. For kids, teens, and families, kickoff parties with Scholastic Book Fair and Petting Zoo, May 31st through June 4th. Check the online event calendar for your branch's day and time. Showtime with Bright Star Theater, June 6th and 8th. Check the online event calendar for times, branches, and show titles. June 6th, 2 o'clock, Jurassic World Terrariums, ages 6 to 12 at Northside. June 8th, 2 o'clock, Sweet Science, kindergarten through 5th grade at Beaumont. June 8th at 3 o'clock, Butterfly Love, Pollinator Gardening, 6 to 12 at Tate's Creek. June 9th, 11 o'clock, Toddler Preschool Glow in the Dark Dance Party at Eastside. June 9th, 3 o'clock, Read a Recipe, ages 6 to 12 at Village. June 11th, Second Saturday Gaming, all ages at Beaumont. June 13th, Virtual Reality Vacation, ages 6 to 12 at Northside. Forensics, the Science of Crime for 5th through 8th graders, June 14th through 15th. Check the online event calendar for branches and times. June 16th, 2 o'clock, Preschoolers Explore, Water Science at Tate's Creek. June 17th, 1 o'clock, Build a Kinetic Sandcastle at Beaumont. Penguin in the Library, June 20th, 21st, and 23rd. Check the online event calendar for branches and times. June 24th at 4.30, Pride Prom, Middle and High School at Tate's Creek. June 28th, Science of Bubbles, ages 4 through 12 at Central. For more information on programs, reading lists, reading tracker, and other fun downloadable activities, visit us at lexpublib.org summer. Thanks for listening to Turning the Page, a podcast brought to you by Lexington Public Library staff. If you've enjoyed listening, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any questions or suggestions for future podcasts, you can email us at elibrarian at lexpublive.org. That's elibrarian at L-E-X-P-U-B lib.org. I'm Jennifer, and we'll be back to turn another page.